Hi, Taurus. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that your midweek is going pretty good so far. Okay. So we have the Ten of Wands. We have the uh, High Priestess, Major Arcana. And we have the Seven of Cups. Interesting. So the Ten of uh, Wands. Ten of Rods, the Ten of Wands. We see the woman here. She's, <laughs> she's probably talking to herself and saying, why? Why me? I have so much to do. I have so much on my plate. And by golly, it's hard to carry these wands forward. It's hard to lift the load by yourself. And you know, we find ourselves in situations where we take on too much or where we have too many commitments, too many obligations, whether they're family, professional, or financial. And the weight of the burden can start to uh, become oppressive and it can cause stress and it can cause anxiety and it can just wrap you up in a knot. So the Ten of Wands, you know, I think it's a really big message to get, which is to the extent possible, try to uh, talk to people to get some help. You know, if you're doing too much at home, if you're cooking and you're taking care of the kids and you're driving them to their activities and then you're doing this and then you have a full-time job, you know, you sometimes you, you measure out what everyone else is contributing and you take stock and you're thinking, gosh, they're not working as hard as I am. So you have to speak up. You have to state your piece. You have to ask for help or you have to say, this is inequitable. You know, the workload here, I'm doing too much. I'm doing way too much. Too much is in my corner. Ask for help. See if you can delegate. Not always easy for people uh, to delegate or to give up control, so to speak. But maybe if it's an office situation, you talk to your supervisor, you just say, hey, you keep giving me more work. How about spreading the love to, the, to my co colleagues? So it really is a message to watch your step because when we feel overburdened when we're tired when we're stressed out it can lead to illness it can lead to resentment and just a foul mood so do something here to take care of how you feel burdened how you feel indebted to whatever you feel indebted to so with this here's the high priestess and the high priestess sits in this very serene surrounding with the green and she's going to call upon her sense of stillness her passivity her intelligence and her knowledge because she understands herself and sometimes we we dig deeper within to learn more about ourselves we trust our inner guide we trust our intuition we trust our hunches and our instinct and when we see the high priestess it's a real big uh you know sign to you to say trust your intuition trust what you feel um it, whatever the situation may be trust what you're feeling you know pay attention to that feeling don't just swipe it away keep it present and you know, the high priestess, it's about our psychic nature. We're all, and we all can tap into that psychic frequency. And you have to be open to the messages, however they come to you, in dreams, on uh, numbers that you see, things that people say, visions perhaps, colors. However the messages that the universe is sending to you, absorb them and then think about them they may be trying to tell you something and trust that feeling that's really what the high priestess is about it's about supreme knowledge but you have the knowledge 
and you have the knowledge from within, which is below the surface, your secrets, your talents, your headspace. So you may have a chance during the day, maybe you can go to your altar, say a few prayers or affirmations, sit quietly in solitude and reflect meditate, do what you need to do to tap into your intuition and your psychic sense as well. So burden, psychic ability, trusting your intuition. And here's the seven of cups. And we see the woman here looking at all the fine options and here's the, the sign above shop. And you know, when we are shopping, we are considering all the different options of what we want to buy, of what we're looking at. We may be going down a mental checklist, which is like, uh, I don't need that now, maybe later. This is what I need. I think we'll have one of those. The process of having these options, number one, it broadens your, your mind and it broadens your possibilities because you may be visualizing them. You may be imagining them. And that's important because once you lose that imagination and you get rigid or you get stuck in this very narrow place, it becomes a much darker world, I think. So the seven of cups is about having many options. And the key is to take stock of those options. Maybe you want to pursue one of them that you can bring to reality. Maybe you're just having a fanciful day where you're just like playing the what if game and you're finding that to be fun. And maybe that's a stress reliever with the seven of cups, imagination for the win visualization again for what you see in the future. But if you live in fantasy and if you live under the umbrella of illusion where you're kidding yourself and where you're really, uh, if you're not getting past the imagination or visualization where you start, you know, making concrete plans, then you, then you may struggle. So that's maybe the, the other side of the seven of cups is that fantasies and illusions and too many options can be paralyzing and it can, um, you know, we may get caught in the daydreaming game and not taking what we can from daydreaming and then turning it into something real for us that we can, you know, we can make our own, our passions. If you're looking at an option, which is maybe going back to school and you may be fantasizing about, I'd really like to get that degree or I'd like to change my career path and do that. The first step is the imagination and the visualization. The next step is to take some action toward it. So always interesting with the seven of cups, because I am a firm believer in visualization. I'm a firm believer in dreaming big. And yes, you may have a lot in front of you and it may be like, wow, ultimately, I think that your, your intuition is going to tell you to be drawn to the one that maybe you can take a little further and make it a reality. Interesting card. So numerology wise, we have 10 and two is 12, 12 and seven is uh, 19, 19 is 10 and 10 reduces to one. And one is about beginnings. It's about inspiration and leadership being an original. And then finally, let's choose a goddess guidance Oracle card. Guinevere, true love, the romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. Sounds good on any day. <laughs> and however that love appears, maybe it's love of self. Maybe it's love of a 
path that you want to take and maybe it's somebody that you meet that you connect with it's a lovely message and i hope that um i hope that we all connect and have that great love